Welcome to my September reading wrap up. I can't believe I'm saying those words because I haven't done a reading wrap up in months. Hi besties, welcome, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new video and welcome to my September wrap up and also my October TBR. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books in my October TBR. So let's start with the book that I haven't finished. I'm still reading it, but I'm probably gonna like finish it today. So when I'm filming this, it's the 29th. So it's still part of my September reading wrap up. So the book that I'm currently finishing is This Time It's Real by Ann Liang. And this one is part of the TBR series that I'm doing on my TikTok. And also I'm doing a mini reading vlog for this book. Also on my TikTok, if you guys wanna follow um, along, I am doing mini vlogs for each of the books that I randomly pick out for the TBR challenge. If, I, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm doing a series over my TikTok where I randomly choose books from my bookshelf and read them. <laughs> and this is the fourth book that I've chosen. So I'm still reading this book. This is a high school fake dating trope. The girl goes viral on Twitter for a story that she wrote and posted online. And it's basically a romance story. Um, like a beautiful romance story that like basically out of a book but she tells the story as if she's living it like that is her life that is like that is her experience with her current boyfriend so she's telling this this beautiful story of how they met and like and like how they talk to each other and it's so romantic and so cute and it's all fake <laughs> So her story goes accidentally viral and now she's telling everyone that there is a guy but she doesn't have a guy. So she finds this guy from school. His name is Kaz Song and he is like a famous actor in Beijing and like everyone knows who he is. So now they are fake dating. She's getting her fake boyfriend, he's getting the recognition. They're both taking advantage of the arrangement but still. Like I'm kind of freaking out because I know this is gonna blow up at some point but I'm really liking it, it's really cute, um, the writing style is so easy to read so if you want like a quick, um, cute, it looks like a cute romance and easy to read, this is gonna be it so I will let you guys know, that is the one that I'm finishing right now um, next one, I don't have the like actual physical book of this next book but I really wanted to talk about it because it's like a book that has changed my life in the past three weeks. That serious. So this book is The Artist's Way and I, to be completely honest with you guys, like I picked this book up because I was desperately looking for a book that would help me get out of my creative front. So I have, I have been like creatively blocked for months like i haven't been consistently posting or like doing the content that i really love i was very creatively blocked like my job and what i love to do is being creative and i was just having a really hard time as like my last resort i was like i i will do anything i will do anything <laughs> to get out of this rut and to get out of this mindset and i picked this book up and like I've seen reviews of people in my same exact situation and they get out of it. So I started reading it and it has been three weeks, I think three weeks, and it has changed my entire year. So basically, um, this author gives the story of how she helps people get out of creative rights. And she has this whole system where you actually have to put in work. Like, it's not like you're gonna read the book and you're like, poof, you're out of your creative rut. No, you have to put in the work because she gives you things to do, like homework, if you will. And I have to say I haven't been following it 100%, but one thing that I have been following to the T are the morning pages. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, basically every single morning you write three pages of everything that's in your head. It doesn't matter what it is, you take a piece of paper and you write whatever it is in your head. If you don't have anything to say, if you if you don't know what to say, if you don't know what to write, you literally write, I don't know what to write. <laughs> I think it's this challenge, you know? You get out of bed in the morning, maybe you feel, maybe you feel uninspired, but still you're gonna sit down and you're gonna obligate yourself to do this. And I have been doing that for the past three weeks and it has just become part of my morning routine. And I'm not gonna lie, like there are several days 
where I don't feel like it. I'm not in the mood for it. I don't want to do it, but I sit down and I do my morning pages and they are amazing. Um, so if you're in a creative rut or any rut um, work related, lifestyle related, like in your life, or you just feel uninspired and you don't know what to do, this is going to be the book for you. So all the books that I have here are not organized. Like it's not in the order that I read them, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to talk about the books that I read. Okay. The next book that I read this month is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was also part of the TBR series. There are a lot of books that are part of the TBR series because that is what my weeks mostly consist of. But this book, I just have to say one thing. Taylor Jenkins Reid did it again. She did it once more. So this book is about Carrie Soto. is basically a very famous um, tennis player and she became the best, like the number one tennis player in the world. The first 100 pages is basically her history and her story of how she became number one and like the best. And after that, it tells the story of five years later when she is 37, which is technically as it's described in the book, pretty old to be a tennis player. She retired when she was 32 and at 37 she wants to come back and be the number one best player again. So it's the whole process of her trying to beat everyone at 37, get in shape, get in the right mindset, like do all the, do all the things that you have to do um, that she did before but obviously it's so much harder now because she's 37 she has been retired like her body it's not the same as it was before so that is the plot of the story but the ending actually has a completely different message which was why i ended up loving it you just feel like that is how it's supposed to end in my opinion i gave this book 4.8 out of 5 stars um, I thought it was an amazing book. Okay, next book I read is Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. This is the book. This is actually kind of like a Christmas slash New Year's kind of book. This whole entire book is set in like in an entire Christmas. So like the entire Christmas week um, and like the holidays. But I really enjoyed this book. I gave it 4.2 out of 5 stars because I felt like it was between a 4 and a 4.5, so I gave it 4.2. Basically, the story starts with a backstory. So the main girl, Ellie, meets this girl on Christmas Eve, and they spend the entire day together. Like, they were strangers, and they just spend the entire day together. They end up having a one-night stand, and something happened the next day, and they never talked again. But Ellie was basically heartbroken from that entire day so whatever happened really left her kind of heartbroken and one year later she is basically in a crappy job that she hates her life is falling apart she cannot pay rent like her entire life is just very negative and here comes a random guy that proposes an arrangement to her so basically they are to have a fake marriage because in order for this guy to access a trust fund that was left for him um, by his grandfather he needed to marry someone um, he needed to get married so he chose a fake marriage with Ellie and here comes the next part of the story so they start the fake marriage arrangement and one of the first rules that he um, wrote is that is that Ellie needed to spend the entire Christmas week with the guy's family. So they go up to this guy's family cabin um, and it's like a huge cabin, beautiful cabin. When she gets there, she starts meeting everyone. She's so extremely nervous and this guy has a sister, but the sister hadn't arrived yet. And when she did, she almost fainted because this guy's sister is the girl from last Christmas. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I love that twist. So I highly recommend this book. It's just really like cozy, funny slash romantic um, book. Okay, the next book that I read that I don't have the paperback yet, but I really want to get it is I Don't Want to Grow Up by Scott Stillman. So this is another book that really helped me get out of my creative rut and just my <laughs> rut in general. What do you want to be when you grow up? We've been asked this question over and over, practically since the day we could walk. Many of us have absolutely no idea. We never have and we never will. This bothers us terribly and on a profound level. 
we feel useless, disconnected, scattered, unfocused. If we could just make up our minds about something, about anything, what if you didn't have to grow up? Society would like us to believe that to be happy, we need successful careers. But let's face it, we're not all meant to be doctors, lawyers, scientists, and accountants. Some are meant to be dreamers, the people on the fringes of society who don't necessarily subscribe to the modern version of the American dream. Artists, adrenaline junkies, nomads, life seekers, those who doubt conventional wisdom, question authority, and continually search for newer, better ways to live. The world needs freaks, now more than ever. Never before has there been such an opportunity to live the life of your dreams. Never before have there been so many ways to have fun. What do you want to be when you don't grow up? I just love the concept of this book. The title may kind of throw you off, but to be honest, like the entire message of the story and so and just all the things that you read from this book are just so beautiful and so true and this is like one of those books that i would reread like a hundred times okay the next book that i read is the debt romantics by ashley poston um so i recently talked about this book but this book is about florence day and basically florence is a ghostwriter for a very big author like a very famous author romance author but florence has kind of a predicament at the moment because she doesn't believe in love she just got out of a really bad breakup and she just doesn't believe in love anymore so she has to essentially write this book about romance and she has she has to finish this manuscript this couple that is so in love and she has not been able to do it so one day her new editor um, tells her that he needs the book by tomorrow or she basically would get fired. She already knew that, that there was no way that she could finish that manuscript in a day. So she just goes out to have fun and to forget about everything and she actually ended up kissing her editor because they bumped into each other, things happen, whatever. At that same moment, she gets a phone call um, from a family member that her beloved father passed away. Obviously, that is very tragic and very sad, so she packs everything up. She goes to her hometown, which she hasn't been um, back in a decade because the town never understood her. The thing was is that her father um, kind of passed this gift onto um, Florence, which was being able to see and talk to ghosts. She gets to her hometown to basically help arrange everything for the funeral, for her father's funeral, and the ghost of a man appears and she recognizes this person. And I'm not gonna say which person it is, but basically the entire story is her and this guy um, hanging out together, her trying to help him because he doesn't know what happened to him. He's bas He basically died. He doesn't know how or what is happening. So that is the entire kind of like storyline and then the funeral happens at the end and other things happen but honestly i thought this book was going to be like a full-on romance and it's really not and i really like that so definitely it's a very good read for the fall or for october if you want those vibes i gave this book four out of five stars okay the next book that i read is the perks of being a wallflower by stephen kaboski i have talked a bunch about this book um recently but you guys definitely know this book or the movie um i personally had watched the movie but never read the book and i'm so glad i did because it is an amazing book. So basically the story is about Charlie. Charlie is entering his freshman year um, of high school. He basically doesn't have a lot of friends. His only friend from middle school killed himself and it's just a very tragic beginning to the story. But the writing style of this book is in a letter form. So Charlie is writing letters to someone telling him, telling this person about his life and just everything that goes on with his life. So that is the writing style of the book which i absolutely loved um it is it does have quite a few trigger warnings so make sure to look that up but overall it's just a beautiful book it does have a plot twist at the end which is very much sad and <laughs> traumatic to be honest um but i really like the overall message after that and i gave this book five stars this is an amazing book okay the next book that i read is the saturday night ghost club by craig davidson 
This is basically a book about an irresistible coming of age story about a group of misfit kids who spend an unforgettable summer investigating local ghost stories and urban legends. The main character's name is Jake and Jake's uncle is basically the one who runs the entire Saturday Night Ghost Club and they go um, in search for like ghosts and they basically go to different locations and search for ghosts and it is very much creepy. wouldn't say it's the creepiest book I've read but definitely I was reading this at night and it was definitely kind of creepy. Um, but then kind of like the storyline faded a little and my interest went with that. Uh, it's just I got bored of the book. Okay, the next book that I read is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This book is absolutely amazing. I gave this book 4.8 out of 5 stars. Um, this is technically a pen pal okay this is a one-sided pen pal situation enemies to lovers and also kind of like a life or death situation so this story is set in a world where gods are at war so there are two gods and those gods are at war but but humans are the one fighting for their lives they are fighting at the front lines they are the people who fight for these gods basically fighting for humanity and the main character of the story is Iris Wino. Iris lives a very difficult situation. Her mother is basically a drunk. Her brother enlisted to go to the front lines and she hasn't heard back from her brother in so long. She writes letters to him that she puts under her wardrobe and those letters disappear out of nowhere. They disappear as to if they were delivered to somewhere. But she doesn't know where or if her brother is actually getting these letters. And at the same time, she starts an internship slash job at the like one of the most prestigious newspaper companies as a journalist. So in the workspace, she has a rival named Roman Kit. They both want the same position. And one day, Iris was writing one of her letters and she put it in her wardrobe and it vanished. Then she received a letter, but that meant that someone was reading her letters. And that someone was Roman Kit. Why? You shall, you shall find out. But that's what I mean when I say it's a one-sided pen pal situation because um, Roman didn't know that Iris was the one writing the letters, but Iris had no idea that it was Roman all the time. All that time. So Iris ended up losing the job position at the Oath Gazette, the newspaper company, and she decided to uproot her life and enlist to be a journalist informant of the war. She lives in this bed and breakfast with another girl that also enlisted. They help the wounded soldiers, they write stories, but then one day, one random day, who arrives at the doorstep? Roman. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I absolutely love this book. I highly recommend it. I was glued to the pages. It was very good. Like it was a it was a good read. Okay, and the last book that I read this month is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This one is one of the creepiest books I've read in my entire life. This is definitely a book to read for the Halloween season, so October. Put this book in your October TBR. You, I think you can get it as an add-on for Book of the Month if you have Book of the Month, so that is great. But basically, this book has a backstory of a lady serial killer from the 1970s. And this lady killer killed two men. Two men were murdered with the same gun with strange notes left behind. Beth Greer was the perfect suspect, a rich eccentric 23 year old woman seen fleeing from one of the crime scenes. But she was acquitted and she retreated to the isolation of her mansion. So the murders were unresolved. Now, Oregon 2017, Shay Collins is a receptionist, but by night she runs a true crime website, The Book of Cold Cases. When she meets Beth by chance, she asks her for an interview. To Shay's surprise, Beth says yes. So basically the entire story is how Shay is trying to find out what happened, what really happened with the lady killer's murders and she's trying to uncover this entire murder mystery. So it is a murder mystery, but at the same time, it's a paranormal murder mystery. So it is very much creepy. You get those paranormal vibes. It's creepy, it's kind of scary, um, but it was such an intriguing book. Like I cannot stop reading this book. It was just, you were there. Like you felt like you were there. I gave this book 4.8 out of five stars. Okay, besties, those were all the books that I read in the month of September. Now, let's get to the books that I want to read in the month of October. So, 
The first one that I have here is actually part of a series and I really want to do a video in maybe October or November where I try to finish or continue reading series that I have um, unfinished. Series that I haven't finished. And one series that I haven't finished is A Touch of Darkness and I really want to finish it because I love the first book. So in October I want to read A Touch of Freelan which is the second book in that series. Um, so this is about, this is a Hades and Persephone um, retelling. There is, I remember there is a lot of romance spicy scenes basically persephone living in the in the underworld with hades but they fall in love and it's just a whole thing but i really want to know what happens after that i do believe there was kind of like a cliffhanger at the end of the first book i don't remember what it was exactly but i am very excited to read this one are you saying you wouldn't fight for me hades sighed and brushed his finger along her cheek Darling, I would burn this world for you. Persephone's relationship with Hades has gone public, and the resulting media storm disrupts her normal life and threatens to expose her as the goddess of spring. To add to her troubles, everyone seems eager to warn Persephone away from the god of the dead by exposing his hellish past. Oh my gosh. I feel like this is gonna be the ultimate miscommunication trope. Okay, the next book that I want to read is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Torden. This one, I showed you guys this book in my fall book haul and I read a comment from one of you guys telling me that this book kind of was, I don't remember exactly what the comment was, but that it had kind of like a twisted story, but it was a good story, like it was a good book. So I am very excited to read this book. She's been murdered hundreds of times and each day Aiden Bishop is too late to save her. The only way to break this cycle is to identify Evelyn's killer. But every time the day begins again, Aiden wakes in the body of a different guest. And someone is desperate to stop him ever escaping Blackheath. I don't know why I love things that have to do with like people, like the main character living a bunch of different lives. Like reincarnating or living a bunch of different lives. Like <laughs> I love that kind of shit. So very excited to read this one. Okay, because this is my October TBR, I have to have a book about witches. So I decided to pick up Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This was also part of my fall book haul. Um, I specifically got this book for kind of like the Halloween season, so the entire month of October. And I do have other um, books about magic and like witches, but I don't know, I picked this one up, so. Next book that I want to read is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This is also part of my fall book haul. Um, I am very interested in reading this one because it gives me those kind of like magic, the dark magic kind of vibes. Kel is a smuggler, servicing people willing to pay for even the smallest glimpses of a world that they'll never see. It's a defiant hobby with dangerous consequences, which Kel is now seeing firsthand. Okay, another series that I want to continue this month is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Maas. I am in the, I think this is the fifth book. So this is Queen of Shadows. I believe this is the fifth book. Um, I started this book last year, I think. Like it was a while ago. I read the first four books and I got to this one and I pretty much don't remember anything about this book. So I'm probably going to have to reread everything but yeah i want to um try to finish the series someday because i want to start akatar and then i want to start um the other books that i just forgot the names but there's kind of an order so i want to follow it okay the next book that i have here is a book that i really want to read because because there are so many people in my life that have seen the tv show for this book and they love the series like the actual tv show so i really want to get to the book because i just know the book is going to be 10 times better this is outlander by diana gibaldon um and it is a pretty large book so i'm kind of scared the year is 1945. Claire Randall, a former combat nurse, is back from the war and reunited with her husband on his second honeymoon. When she walks through a standing stone in one of the ancient stone circles that dot the British Isles, suddenly she is an outlander in a Scotland torn by war and riding clans in the year of our Lord, 1743. Curled back in time by forces she cannot understand, Claire is catapulted into the intrigues of spies that may threaten her life and shatter her heart. For here, James Fraser, a Galen young Scots warrior, shows her love so absolute that Claire becomes a woman torn between 
fidelity and desire and between two vastly different men okay the next book that i'm going to read this month is spells for forgetting by adrian young this one right here my copy is from book of the month to be quite honest i just picked this one up from my bookshelves i have no idea what this book is about like none emery blackwood's life changed forever the night her best friend was found dead and the love of her life august salt was accused of murdering her Years later, she is doing what her teenage self swore she never would, living a quiet existence on the misty, remote shores of something island that I can't pronounce, and running the family business. Blackwood's tea shop, herbal tonics, and tea leaf readings. But when the island, rooted in folklore and magic, begins to show signs of strange happenings, Emery knows that something is coming. The morning she wakes to find that every single tree on the island has turned color in a single night, August returns for the first time in 14 years and unearths the past that the town has tried desperately to forget. I am definitely going to read this now. Okay, and the last book that I picked for my October TBR is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is the sequel to the first book, Legendborn. And I just want to read this book because I read the first one. I did like the first one, but it wasn't my favorite. So I'm hoping that this book will be better and i would like it so much more the only thing that i'm really kind of been, kind of scared of is that it is huge like like it has so many pages and keep in mind this is a hardcover book but it is a book of the month hardcover book which is you know book of the month books are huge okay besties those are all the books that i'm going to be talking about today i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys have some new recommendations or new books to put in your october tbr I am very excited for this month and very excited for the upcoming videos, so stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe down below and turn on the notification bell so you get notified when I upload more videos. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!